congratulations. If you've made it this far without any major problems or issues, it's all downhill from here because it's the application of the polyester and the sanding back of it that, at least in my view, is the most difficult part of this whole procedure. However, before we go back into the spray booth and apply the two component or catalyzed urethane, I want to discuss a few things about that product. Number one, I want to talk a little bit about safety in using it. Number two, I want to talk about what it is and how it's different from lacquer. So, to discuss that second part, let's go into the spray booth to the blackboard and let me draw you a picture of what we're talking about. In order to understand how a typical lacquer finish is very different from the catalyzed urethane finish we're using for this course, you need to understand the differences between three terms. Now these terms are used somewhat loosely by both finishers and people that make finishes, so I want to define them or clarify them a little bit better. These three words are dry, cure, and then the term burn-in, and I'm going to talk about each one separately. What dry means is that when a finish resists moderate pressure when you touch it with your finger, sometimes called dry to the touch or dry dust free. Cure is something a little bit different. What cure means, and it's usually applied to finishes like polyurethane or varnish and some water-based finishes, it's the time in which a chemical conversion takes place within the finish in which a new molecule or finish is formed. And that cure time can be anywhere from two hours, it could be two days, it could be 30 days. But cure time is important to understand as to how it's different from dry time. As I said, dry time only refers to the amount of time in which any finish is impervious to moderate pressure with your finger. Now, these two terms apply or come into focus when we talk about a term called burn-in. Burn-in is a term that's mostly used by finishers and refers to finishes that chemically melt or burn in to the finish that it's applied to. Some finishes, like lacquer, have an unlimited burn-in window because whenever you apply a coat of new lacquer over old lacquer, whether it's dry, 20 minutes, or whether it's 30 days dry, it's going to chemically melt that prior coat and fuse together. Not so with our catalyzed urethane. Once the catalyzed urethane has dried and has started to cure or form that urethane molecule, it won't have any burn-in window. So let's see why this is important to when we finish a guitar. Understanding the differences between the three terms we just discussed is crucial in finishing because it affects two main things when finishing a guitar or really just about anything else that you finish such as furniture. The things that it affects are adhesion and the rubbing out process. In terms of adhesion, if you apply a finish over another finish when that prior coat is just dry, say 30 minutes or an hour like we do with lacquer, you usually don't have to sand because that new finish will bond easily to the finish below it. In the case of finishes that cure or undergo a chemical reaction and form a new finish like catalyzed polyurethane, if that finish or that first coat that you apply has completely cured, in other words, it's dried more than maybe four or six hours, you have to sand it to ensure good adhesion for the next coat. That's why you'll see in the ILVA instructions that if you wait after a certain amount of time, you must sand that prior finish. It also affects the way that we rub out a guitar 
because when we start the rubbing out process of sanding, then wet sanding, and then buffing, we're actually removing finish. In the case of catalyzed urethane, if one coat doesn't burn into that prior coat, there's going to be a layer or a line that's going to be visible when you buff and rub out the finish, and that's really important. Let me diagram this out for you so you understand it a little bit better. Here's your piece of wood. Now, we've applied a polyester base coat. We've sanded it smooth. Say we were to put nitrocellulose lacquer on top of that. We'd apply one coat of lacquer and then another coat of lacquer. Whether we wait 20 minutes for this coat to be reapplied or 20 days, that second coat is going to chemically and physically fuse to the coat underneath it. So you get complete what we call burn-in, and there's no boundary layer there. So that whether you apply three coats, four coats, five, six, seven, or a hundred coats of lacquer, there's going to be no boundary layer between those layers of finish. And that's important when you rub out because when you start rubbing out by wet sanding and buffing, you're removing finish. And if you have a finish that doesn't burn in, you could get to one of these boundary layers and that's a visible line in the finish and that's not a good thing. When we apply catalyzed urethane, Well, let me say when we're going to apply our catalyzed urethane, we're only going to wait 30 minutes to apply the second and third coats. The finish is dry, but it's not cured. In other words, it hasn't started its cross-linking. So, we do get some burn-in between these coats, at least enough so that when we go to sand it or rub it or buff it out, we won't see any boundary layers. Now, we'll wait one day after applying the three coats of urethane, we'll sand this a little bit because remember, after you wait a certain amount of time with a catalyzed urethane finish, you have to sand it to ensure adhesion. We're then going to apply three more coats 30 minutes apart so that we don't have these boundary layers so that when we go to start our final wet sanding and buffing process we won't see any witness lines. That's the difference between a catalyzed urethane finish and a lacquer finish when you're finishing a guitar.